Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and today I'm going to talk about how to generate some code quickly in Oracle SQL Developer. You can find my contact information here, that's my corporate email. Yes, I do work for Oracle and I spend some time on Twitter, that's my Twitter handle, at that Jeff Smith. Feel free to reach out to me any way you can find me, but those are the two easiest ways. I'm in the development tools group here at Oracle and I'm the product manager for SQL Developer. So just in case you've never seen SQL Developer before, it's our database IDE. It's our development interface for Peel SQL, SQL, store Java procedures, support XML DB, and we've added support for JSON and a few other data exchange formats. But we're also the graphical user interface. So for folks that aren't super fluent at SQL and are better at dragging and dropping or clicking on things. I know that scares you DBAs, but um, we do offer that as well. We're a Java application, so we run on Windows, Macs, Linux, or Unix, any desktop environment that supports uh, Java, basically. We're no additional cost. Our license is handled via your database license. If you're using a free version of the database, you're still covered. If you have a support contract with my Oracle support, then you're able to uh, open service requests with my Oracle support on SQL Developer. So even though we're free, you still get the, the full, full support and love from Oracle Core. I'm showing you features that have been in the tool for a long time, but for full disclosure, uh, let's pretend I'm using 4.1. I'm actually running 4.2 which we don't have available yet, but I like to use these types of things um, for free testing. So apologies if it goes weird on us. 4.1 was released in May, and 4.1.1 is a patch that was just bug fixes for 4.1 that came out in uh, mid-July, I think. And that is enough of the slides. I like to do as much live demo as possible. So I call this the white screen of panic. Or if you're using a uh, old green screen motif, it might not be white, but that's what I call it, the white screen of panic. It's very rare that a developer does anything from scratch. We're probably grabbing snippets off of Stack Overflow or uh, someone's uh, online repository. And, cutting and pasting from our own code and changing it up. But if you do need to start from scratch, maybe you can at least go through your SQL history. So uh, one thing we do is we store things that you've ran in the past and we let you recall them. This is a keyboard shortcut. I'm taking my control menu key and I'm using the up or down arrow key to cycle through queries that I've executed previously. And so this is previously since I installed the tool. And by default, I think it's the last 50 statements. Uh, if you want to see the entire list, you can hit F8 or say view uh, statement or SQL history. And you can search this and you can filter on this. And uh, if there's a filter applied, that will filter what pops up up here. Now, if you don't want to clobber what's in your worksheet and you want to add some new code, just do control shift and that'll append. But as soon as I let go shift and, and do up or down again, it's going to clobber my stuff. So that's not really generating code, but it's throwing code you've already written back into the worksheet. And it's a good way to save yourself. You shut down early on a Friday and forget to save your work. As long as you've executed some version of that work, you can probably recall it from your history list. Now, true code generation, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. So assuming you have in your system a referential integrity or foreign keys on your tables. If you take two or more objects, in this case tables, from your connection list and you, oops, did I lose it? Two, yeah, and drag it over. 
I can ask for a join. And that will build me a select statement. with my where clauses. So for two tables, that's not super exciting, uh, but if you need to join six or seven tables and you're not a fan of typing, and you're not a fan of typos, this is a good way to jump start into that. Um, now, generated code I usually don't like because I'm a control freak and I generally will write it slightly different. So if you don't wanna use aliases and you don't want all of these columns, you can just very quickly toggle over to the query builder if you want. And this is really handy if you have joined seven or eight tables. You can come in here and right click and turn the aliases off or change the aliases, or you can um, uncheck columns that you don't want. And in terms of generating code, this is an alternative way of writing SQL from scratch. So if you're new to Oracle or if you're new to SQL or SQL in general, uh, you can drag and drop objects directly off of this tree, whether they be materialized views, views, uh, synonyms, or tables into this space. And as you make changes here, you know, IDs aren't really interesting. Back over here in the worksheet, you can see it's dynamically changed up that statement. Maybe you've already written some code and you just want to execute some code. You can also take a stored procedure object. So in this case, I have a package body procedure. I'm going to drag that into a worksheet and it's automatically generated an anonymous block for me. So it's declared a local variable that I will need to pass over into my procedure because it has an input of blah. So you can tell I'm a very, very bad programmer. It's not a very good name. There it is. Um, most of your functions and procedures and packages will be a little bit more interesting. So that might save you more typing than what I've just shown. So here's a function that returns a ref cursor. Um, we we'll even document that or create that ref cursor for you. And when you go to execute this, we'll grab that ref cursor contents and throw it into a grid for you. I'm not a fan of typing, so these are the types of things that I learned first when I started a new um, database tool. You know, do, do work for me. Um, the next thing I want to show, uh, stuff that you want to write once and then just use over and over and over again. So I do a lot of demos. I'm always sharing my contact info. I get tired of writing that over and over and over again. So we can create little templates. So I've created a code template here called Jeff. I activate it, oops. I activate it by writing the template and then hitting control. Uh, TTRL plus the spacebar. So I'm not hitting the plus key, but I'm doing Jeff, control, spacebar. That invokes the code insight feature which recognizes that I have a template called Jeff and replaces that with this. So that's good for me, not so useful to you folks. Um, I've created another one called SSF, which stands for select star from. So this one's a little bit more dynamic. I'm gonna hit control space bar. It's already, it's generated this statement for me. So I don't have a table called table but you'll notice that table is automatically highlighted, so I can immediately type my table name here. Run this. So again, I'm really lazy and I hate picking my, or taking my fingers off the keyboard where I'm really productive and over to the mouse where I start to fumble around a little bit. So SSF, control space, um, demo hockey stats. Control enter. So I did all of that without ever picking up my mouse. Now to see where you define these, we're going to go into the preferences. On the database page, there's something called SQL Editor Code Templates. I think we give you a couple just for giggles. 
You can create your own. So let's look at the interesting one, SSF. You can put whatever text you want here. The bracketed text, you will not see the brackets in your code. The brackets tell us what to select um, with the cursor so you can start typing immediately. If I look at uh, this one, you can see nothing's bracketed. So it just pops in there straight as is. Um, you may have seen me generate these object names. So this is our code insight feature. A lot of different ways you can use this. Um, so this is a table auto complete and I'm using control space bar to pop this up. If I do control space with nothing there, it's going to show me everything, which really isn't that useful unless you're just curious what I've got access to. But as I start typing, it gets more interesting. And if I type past the point where nothing else is really possible, uh, so here I've got employees and other schemas that I can see, but if I come back up here and look at my table list, I've got something called form. <laughs> that one's funny. So I've got an autocomplete that goes from form to from, but I've also got a table called form. So if I drag that over, I can also just get the object name. Select star from form. Don't don't write this unless you just really want to mess with people's heads. They're going to try to correct that to from from, and that, that'll be really fun. But what I was trying to show was this select star from head. Yep, so that just automatically pops up because there was only one hit. So I've got select star from here, select star from queries are bad. So here are all of the columns from this table. I can just select the ones that I want. Or again, I'm lazy. So I can automatically generate that column list by mousing over the star. I want to do this again so it's a little bit clear. From HR employees. All right. So I've got two squiggle marks here that do two completely different things. The one I'm talking about is the one on the star. So if I put my mouse over the star, I don't have to click anything. I just mouse over it. I get this tooltip. So it's showing me we've dived into the data dictionary and pulled back a list of columns for this um, object, HR employees. And if I mouse over where it's hyperlinked and then select it, it'll give me the best of both worlds. So I get a very little typing star, but I get explicit uh, column list. And if that reminds me that I really don't need all those columns. Maybe it'll encourage me to remove the ones I don't need. If I hit Control-Z, it'll take me back to what I actually typed. Uh, if you're curious what this first one is from, that's a new feature in 12C called SQL Text Expansion. So select star from literally gets translated to select all the queries. Um, this gets more interesting when you're working with views. So DBA data files, it's either a synonym pointing to a sys view or it's just a straight up view. But if I mouse over this, you can see what actually gets run. And if we format, you can actually see that very simple one statement or one line statement is closer to 400 line query. Okay. The other thing you might want to take a look at are snippets, and we ship with a bunch of these. And I use these sometimes when I want to make a function call that I haven't made in a while, and I forget the uh, argument list. 
or when I'm working with the analytic functions that I'm a huge fan of and I forget what's what. So you can actually drag and drop these um, over into the um, worksheet and it'll write them out for you. And you can edit these as well. So these are the user snippets that I can add. So if I switch over to custom, I like to show this trick. And he wants to write that SQL over and over again. So if you've got a query that you want to make sure it never goes away, uh, don't rely on it sticking into the history. Promote it to a SQL code template or adding it to a snippet. All right. Uh, we're 17 minutes in. I started a minute late, so we're at 16 minutes, and I promised to do 15. I think that's everything I wanted to show. So I'm going to end the recording here, and then I'll stay on and answer questions as folks have them.